Thank you very much. Here is the chair is yours. Bishop Barber, you want to start? Thank you so much, Senator, for being Thank here. Thank you. So we've got this reality. First of all, getting the numbers right. You know, for yep. years we heard 37 million people in poverty, so and so. The reality is 140 million people, 43.5% of this country. Uh, the reality is 26 million black people, but that represents almost 60% of black people in concentrated poverty. But then there's 66 million white people, poor and low wealth. So in terms of raw numbers, it's more white. We've got systemic racism in, just in voter suppression. I won't go through the other ones. It's in voter suppression that we haven't seen since the days of Jim Crow. 26 states before this current president, 26 states since 2010 passed racist voter suppression laws. Uh, Four million people to get up every morning, can buy unleaded gas, can't buy unleaded water. A military industrial complex that has just gone berserk and that Eisenhower, Republican, warned us about, King warned us about, uh, what well, we are spending now 53 plus cents of every discretionary dollar on military, mostly contracts for war, and less than 16 cents of every dollar on health care infrastructure. Then we got this false moral religious narrative that somehow says if you're, you know, if, you, if you're for tax cuts and for guns and for against women's rights and against gay people and against immigrants, that somehow that's the moral godly thing to do. This is form is right. We, we, we're this form. But in 2016, there were 26 presidential debates, 140 million people in poverty, not one debate on poverty and the interlocking injustices connected, not one full debate on voter suppression and racist gerrymandering. Will you push and use the power of your campaign to push and ensure that of the televised debates, there will be a debate that focuses on systemic racism, how it, that's connected to systemic poverty, ecological devastation, the war economy, the false moral narrative, religious nationalism. How will you do that? And do you even believe that it is necessary for us to have that conversation in front of all of America, not just some of America, as you see here today? Yes, I do. I think that is the conversation we need to have with all of America.